All right, so we're reviewing the circumference, folks. Um, let's take a look at the first circle. Tell me what my next line of work should be, Ashley. Um, three times. Yes, three times 3.14, great job. And what did you get for your answer? Nice job. How about letter B? Tell me what my second line of work should look like on letter B, Liam. Uh, 10 times 3.14. Where'd you get the 10 from? Uh, the, uh, radius. Yep. So we're given the radius, but we need the diameter. So we want to write the diameter in there. Okay, great job, Liam. And what'd you get for your answer? 31.4 inches. Great job. Okay. How do we do so far? Okay, awesome. All right, let's take a look at this next circle. So number five, five A. Tyler, what should the next line of work look like? 14 over seven times 22 over seven. Why 14 over seven? Or, or, sorry, Just 14 14. over one. Okay, times 22 over seven. So nice job with the, with the um, the pi that we're supposed to use there because we've got a multiple of seven. And how did you get 14 from that picture? Um, so I multiplied seven by two. So yep. You multiplied seven by two. That's perfect. Nice job. Okay. So I'm guessing you cross canceled. And what did you get for your final answer? Uh, Very good. How about our final circle there? Kendall, what's the next line of work? times 21 over one, great job. And did you cross cancel? Yep. Okay, and then what did you get for your final answer? 66 inches, perfecto. All right, so we're good. I'm gonna hide these meeting controls here. So we're feeling pretty good on circumference? Okay, good, let's mix it up. All right, let's really review really quick before we go on. What is the concept of, can anybody, let me phrase it this way. Can anybody give me a synonym for circumference? Um, Bastion. Think about a square. What would the equivalent of circumference be if we were talking about a rectangle or something like that? What would that word be? Ainsley? Perimeter. Very good. So when we talk about circumference, we're talking about perimeter. Okay. Now, we're going to notice that on these next problems, we're going to use the word perimeter, right, instead of circumference. And that is because we were going to be finding the perimeter of some semicircles and quarter circles. So where we're gonna have to find like the partial circumference, but then add in the rest of the shape. So let's just talk through what we're gonna do here, guys. Eyes on me, please. So when we talk about perimeter, guys, I like to imagine a garden. Does anybody garden in here? Does anybody have a semicircular garden? Yeah, I guess not. But imagine we do, because that would be kind of cool. Yeah. And we need to keep out Peter Rabbit because he's a pest. Um, he's a cute pest, but you are Farmer McGregor and you do not want him eating all your cabbages. So we have to fence all the way around the garden or Peter Rabbit is going to find an inn. So that means not only the circular part, but across the straight part as well. That's part of our garden. So perimeter is all the way around. So what that means for us is that we're gonna have to find, let me do another color here. We're gonna have to find the circumference of part of the circle, which we can easily do. I bet you guys can guess right now how to find that. Yeah, it's already there, yeah. So, but not only do we need to find the circumference of that half circle, we need to add on the straight edge right there in order to find the actual perimeter. So giving, finding the circumference of a half circle would not give us the perimeter. Can you guys see why? Come on guys, nods of acknowledgement or shakes, shaking the head. Okay, let me talk. Okay, how many, how, okay, give me a thermometer. Can you see why? Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. Thank you for the thermometer. Let me talk about it one more time, okay guys? <laughs> McGregor got him. Okay. When I use this formula, circumference equals pi d, what portion of the circle does it give me? 
Circumference equals pi d. Look up here, guys. What portion of the circle does it give me? Does it give me the whole thing? Does it give me half the circle? Yeah. What does it give me, Charlie? It gives the whole thing. It's it's the entire circumference, right, folks? No one's struggling with that, right? All right. So if I wanted to find half of the circumference, how would I find? So let's just say I wanted half of the circle. I want this part right here. What would I use to find that from my formula? If I just want half the circle, Gabby? One half pi D, right? I would use one half pi D and that would give me just, just my half of the circle, right? What's the difference between this shape that you see right here in the red where I've used one half pi D to find that part of the circle and this shape right here? What's the difference? Tyler. Um, Start your sentence with the shape on the bottom or the shape on the top. Like that. Uh, shape on the bottom is all connected now. It's all connected, yes. The shape on the bottom is closed, isn't it? It has a line going across the bottom. Will the circumference formula include that distance across the bottom when I find that one half pi, um, one half pi d guys? No, it, it won't, will it? So we're gonna have to add that on. Remember when we find perimeter, we're just finding the distance around a shape, okay? So the way we're gonna do that with a semicircle is we're gonna start with this formula, one half pi d. And let's go ahead and fill in our values, one half, and we're gonna do 22 over seven times 22 over seven and my diameter right now, remember diameter is all the way across the circle, is 21 inches. So there's my second line of work. Okay, now let's do some cross canceling magic, you guys. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna back up. Kala, what's your question? Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's one time, Kala, what's one times two times six? Yeah, you do. You just did it. You multiply three things. Okay. You guys, the reason I like to set it up all like this instead of like multiplying once and then multiplying again is here's why. Because when we, we, first of all, we can multiply in any order, right? When we have it set up like this, we can, all we need to do is pick one numerator and one denominator to cross cancel together. So I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel that two and the 22. Now I'm going to cross cancel the seven and the 21. And look what we have on the bottom in the denominator. It's all ones, all ones. So the denominator is easy. One times one times one. And the numerator is one times 11 times three. So what do I have in my numerator, guys? 33. Okay, now keep in mind what we just find, found. Did we find all the way around this shape? We did not. Good job. All we found was the distance around the curved part. So to actually find the perimeter, and this is why we're calling it perimeter and not like half circumference, we're gonna need to add the length of the curve plus the diameter of the semicircle, which is this distance across here. So we're gonna add 33 and 21. And what are we gonna get? 54, 54 what? Yeah. Inches. That is the value that is the perimeter of the entire shape all the way across. Well, let me do a box. <laughs> all right, give me another thermometer. I wanna see thermometers on everybody. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more guys. Your notes are not the end of the lesson here today. We're gonna to do some from the workbook too. All right, now let's, so that's a semicircle. Let's talk about a quarter circle. Okay. You guys, this is a really hard lesson and I need your voices off. Thank you. Annie. Um, slide. Yes. Yep. That's because the P stands for perimeter and not just circumference. Yeah, because it says find the perimeter. Yeah. Number six also says find the perimeter, but now we have a quarter of a circle, don't we? So let's, okay, I look here. Okay, let's talk about a quarter circle. 
let's just take a look at what the completed circle would look like. It would be like this, right? Something like that. Okay. So when you have a quarter circle, we've got this five over here. What is that? What does that measurement represent? Diameter or radius? It's the radius. Radius equals five feet. So then what's the diameter? 10 feet. What do I use in my circumference equation? Radius or diameter? Diameter. diameter okay. So now since we're using a quarter circle, of course, we're going to do one fourth pi times diameter. Is everybody good with that? Can somebody please tell me before we start plugging in numbers, after I multiply one fourth pi times diameter, what portion of this shape over here is that going to find? Yeah. Elijah, go ahead. The other half. Show me with your finger. Uh huh. Well, I'm not adding anything to it yet. Ainsley, what what is that going to find? Yep. Let me do another thing here. I'm going to highlight. It's going to find this right here. And that, that'll be it. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. So circumference is going to equal 1 fourth, and we're going to do 3.14. I'm going to use the time symbol so we don't confuse that with a decimal. What is my diameter again, folks? 10. OK, I can go ahead and cross cancel a little bit. Let's cross cancel the 4 and the 10. We'll, we'll divide both of those by 2. And the 10 will become a 5. And now I have the circumference equals 3.14 times 5. And let's multiply the, the denominators, right? I don't always write it in ones. Uh, I need you to take a notes here, bud. Thank you. So 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. So when we get to the end here, we're going to have to divide by 2. All right? So let's do this. Let's do 3.14 and multiply by 5. Nice job. Okay. 15.7. So let's just write that down so we don't lose our way here. So we've got 15.7, and now we need to divide it by 2. Okay, so let's set it up. 15.7 divided by 2. Do I need to move the decimal at all, folks? No, I don't, because I've got a whole number in my divisor. So we just put the decimal above where it, in the, in the quotient, above where it is in the dividend. Yeah, keep going, guys. What'd you guys get? Kinsey? 7.85. Nice job. 7.85 feet. Great. Am I done? No. Because all that gave me was the curved portion. Now, I have two more sides to add in, don't I? I have this side. And I have that side. So now I need to find my perimeter, 7.85 plus 5 and plus another 5. Right, plus 10. But I wanted you to see that I'm adding 5 for this side and I'm adding 5 for this, this side right here. So what's the answer? 17.85. What? Feet. Okay, now how are we feeling? <laughs> Getting there? Okay, let me switch over the, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna switch over to my other camera here. All right, open up to exercise three, please. See if it picks up the camera. It's not picking up the room. There we go. All right. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Let's do not letter letter A here together, number one A. I've got the figure of a semicircle right here. Okay. What is the diameter of this semicircle? Ray. Yes, let's go ahead and write that down. 20 centimeters. Good. Can you guys see that or do we need a zoom? Let's do it. There we go. How's that? 
What is the formula that I'm going to use to find the curved portion of my shape? Gabby. Uh, C equals one half pi D. Good job. Okay, I'm using my highlighter. You guys may want to do the same just to help you keep track of what it is you're finding. So I would recommend you do that with me. All right, so let's plug in some numbers. I have one half times 3.14 times 20. Oh, beautiful. I can go ahead and cross cancel the two and I can cross cancel the 20 and now I don't even have to do much. My circumference equals what? Alex? 31.4. Great, am I done? Nope. Nope, let's go ahead and highlight that in blue. That doesn't, hasn't given us a, the perimeter yet. We need this part as well. All right, so we're gonna say perimeter. And what two values do I add for perimeter? Austin. Uh, uh, yes, great job with the plus 20, because it could be confusing. You might, you might be tempted to just add 10, but we need to add the whole diameter there. So my answer is going to be 51.4 centimeters. Okay, Elijah. Oh, I wrote, the, I wrote it wrong right here. You're right. I had a mistake in my notebook. Thank you. Yeah, we needed to add 20. Okay. Let's try something harder. We're going to do 2B. All right, here we go. Voices. Check it out, guys. We have got um, three different sized portions of circles right here. Annie, you can't see it very well? How's that? Is that better? 3B, now you can see it? Okay. We're going to need to conserve space in our work area down here, you guys. All righty. When I look at this shape, let's talk through what we're going to find to find perimeter. I've got a curved portion here. I've got a curved portion here. I've got yet another curved portion here. Wow. And then just, I just have one straight side right here. Okay, so we're going to need to find the three curved portions, and then we're going to need to add in that one little straight side right there. Okay, so let's talk about the diameter of this tiny little quarter circle right here. What's the diameter of it? If this is 10 inches, and notice that there's a tick mark here, and there's a tick mark here, that means that those are congruent. Those are the same. What's the diameter of the tiny little quarter circle? Halla? It's, it's 20 inches. Okay. Um, what's the diameter of the large quarter circle? Okay, this is 10 and this is 10. So that means the radius is 20. So what's the diameter? What is it? 40. What's the diameter of the semicircle? Okay, we've got, remember this right here. Okay, so this right here is 10. This little guy right here, all right? I'm not talking about the diameter of the small quarter circle. And this, this radius right here, this is 20. So what's the diameter of the semicircle? 30 inches. Do you guys see how we found that? Yeah. It's kind of confusing. That's why we're doing it together. Ray. The diameter is 40. The diameter of that size semicircle. Here's why, okay? Check it out. This is 10 right here and 10 right here. So this length right here, Ray, is 20. But that's the radius, because that's a large circle, and we need a diameter for circumference. 
All right, let's start working. We're gonna, let's find the diameter of the green first. So I'm gonna just go ahead and organize my work here with colors. And we're gonna do one fourth, uh, actually let's do circumference equals one fourth pi times diameter. So one fourth times 3.14. And my diameter on that smaller semicircle was 20. Okay, so we can cross cancel with the four and the 20. And I'm left with circumference equals 3.14 times five. Okay, does anybody remember that from a, I think, didn't we already do 3.14 times five today? What was it, Gabby? 15.7, great job. And I won't include units quite yet because we have a lot of work left to do. <laughs> okay. Now let's do the circumference of the blue quarter circle. So my circumference is gonna equal, again, one fourth pi times diameter, one fourth times 3.14, and my diameter over here is 40, which cross cancels with that four beautifully. And we get to do this in our heads. So it's 3.14 times 10. What is it? 31.4. Great job. Now we need to do the purple. Okay, I'm slowing down. I'll just get ready. How are we doing so far? Great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Do we are we do we understand that we have now found the circumference of the green yep. curve, mm -hmm. and we have found the circumference of the blue curve? Are we all on the same page? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna find the circumference of the purple curve. Okay. What shape is the purple curve? A semicircle or a quarter circle? Okay. So what do we need to use for our formula this time? Yep. One half pi d. Good. So one half times pi times diameter. And I'm going to run out of room, but that's okay. So one half times 3.14. And our diameter over here was 30. I'll cross cancel the two and the 30. And I'll just have um, the circumference is equal to 3.14 times 15. I'm going to draw a line here to keep my work straight. Okay. So what's the circumference of the purple? 3.14 times 15. It's going to be a little bit more than 45, right, guys? Because 3 times 15 would be 45. Yeah. Raise your hand when you have it. What is it, Ainsley? 15.7 isn't reasonable. Remember, we've got a little bit more than 3 times 15. So we would have somewhere about a little bit more than 45. Because so three times 15 is 45. And then we've got the 14 hundredths times 15. What'd you get, Finn? That is incorrect. What do you have, Ray? 47.1, good. 47.1, and we're working in inches for this. Are we done? No. What's our, what do we need to do now? We need to add everything. Good. Okay. So now let's start. Let's start a new um, P equals. And we're going to add everything we just found. So I found the circumference of the green right here. I found the circumference of the blue edge right there and then the purple. So 15.7 plus 31.4 plus 47.1. Is that everything? Yeah. No. no. Gage, what do I need? You have to add the 10 inches. I have to add the 10 inches because remember I have this little straight side right here, you guys. So plus 10. Can you raise your hand when you have that. This one you're probably going to write. Line up. Remember when you add with decimals, you're lining up your decimals. Okay, lining up your decimal places.
All right, Kendall, what'd you get? Mm, I think you forgot to add in the 10. Gage, what do you have? Uh, 104.2 inches. 104.2 inches, good. That is the correct answer. I think you added all the curves correctly. I never forgot. You did? Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Okay. Let's do one more together. It's really important that we get through one more, you guys, because um, some of this is going to be homework tonight. So I want you guys to have examples, okay? So um, for these two down here, when you guys are finding the perimeter of these, just remember you got to go around the objects, okay? So just think of yourself walking around the shapes. All right, let's take a look at 3B right here. We have a circle divided into eight equal parts. Oh boy. Okay. So help me out with what my circumference formula might be. Remember we've done one half so far. We've done one fourth. We're gonna wanna find the circumference of this edge and then we're gonna need to add in the straight edges. Carly, what would you do? Yes, nice right. job. We're going to do three eighths high D. Three eighths times 3.14. And what is my D? What's my diameter, guys? Yeah, I heard it. What was it, Elijah? 20. Good. Because this distance across here is 10, that's just a radius. That's only halfway across the circle. My diameter is 20. So we can go ahead and cross cancel. Let's see, let's divide by four. We're gonna get two there and we'll get five up here. And now my circumference equals three times 3.14 times five. And we're gonna divide everything by two. Okay. So I would do the three times five first, that's 15. And then I would do 3.14 times 15 over here and then divide that by two. And we're gonna get 47.1 and then we need to divide it by two. Okay, so we've got the circumference equals 23.55. Now what? How do we find the rest of the perimeter? Alex? We add 20. We add 20. Good job. So you've got 10 for right here, and then the other radius right here is another 10. Um, yep. Um, I can't do this across, so I'll just go like this, and we're going to get perimeter equals 43.55 centimeters. Okay, make sure you've copied down those notes so that you have that as an example for tonight's homework. Um, okay, so your homework. Let's go ahead and do some circling. Um, is 1B um, 3A and 3C and D? Yep, 1B, 3A, C, and D. Did you guys get those circled? Mm -hmm. All right. Hold on, don't move, guys. Let's make sure we also copy them in the planner. 1B. No. Uh-uh. No. Problem photo, 1B, 3A, 3C, and D. You guys can do QA for extra credit if you want.
Good job.